Tibet, often referred to as the roof of the world, is a stunning region nestled high in the Himalayas, where breathtaking landscapes meet a rich tapestry of culture and spirituality. As we embark on this journey through Tibet, we'll witness its majestic mountains, serene monasteries, and the vibrant traditions that have flourished for centuries. One of the most fascinating aspects of Tibetan culture is the practice of polyandry, where women can marry multiple brothers. This unique custom goes beyond mere social structure. It embodies the values of cooperation and resource sharing in a land where resources can be scarce. We'll meet the incredible Tibetan women who navigate this tradition, exploring how it shapes their lives, their families, and their communities. Tibetan Buddhism plays a significant role in daily life, with its teachings of compassion and mindfulness influencing everything from art to festivals. The local cuisine, including dishes like momos and thukpa, reflects the region's culinary traditions shaped by its harsh climate. Tibetan art is also fascinating, with intricate thangka paintings and beautifully crafted jewelry that tell stories of spiritual beliefs. Plus, the role of women in Tibetan society, especially in terms of polyandry, adds another layer to understanding this unique culture. Overall, Tibet is a place where breathtaking nature meets deep spirituality, and the stories of its people, especially the women, highlight the resilience and beauty of their way of life. Polyandry Custom In some Tibetan communities, particularly among nomadic tribes, forms of polyandry have been practiced. Polyandry is a form of marriage where a woman has multiple husbands. This practice often arose as a means to manage land and resources, especially in harsh environments where families sought to keep their land intact and maximize agricultural productivity. By marrying brothers to a single woman, families could prevent the division of land among heirs. The concept of family and relationships in Tibetan culture is often more communal than individualistic. Extended families frequently live together, and relationships may not always conform to Western notions of monogamy or polyamory. In some cases, relationships may involve a level of fluidity and communal living that reflects a broader understanding of kinship and support. With globalization and increased exposure to different cultural practices, some younger Tibetans may adopt more contemporary views on relationships, including polyamory. However, these practices are still relatively rare and often influenced by Western ideologies. Tibet's topography. Tibet's topography is incredibly diverse and unique, characterized by its high altitude, vast plateaus, and majestic mountain ranges. Tibet is often referred to as the Tibetan Plateau, which is the highest and largest plateau in the world, averaging about 4,500 meters, 14,800 feet, above sea level. This vast expanse covers approximately 2.5 million square kilometers, about 970,000 square miles, and is surrounded by towering mountain ranges. The Himalayas, which include some of the highest peaks in the world, form the southern border of Tibet. Mount Everest, the highest mountain on Earth, is located on the border between Tibet and Nepal. Other notable peaks include Kangchenjunga and Lhotse. The Karakoram Range to the west and the Kunlun Mountains to the north also contribute to the dramatic landscape. Moreover, Tibet is the source of several major rivers, including the Yangtze, Yellow, and Indus rivers. These rivers originate from the glaciers and snowmelt in the Himalayas and flow into neighboring countries. Additionally, Tibet is home to numerous high-altitude lakes, such as Yamdrok Lake and Namtso Lake, which are known for their stunning blue waters and spiritual significance. Within the plateau, there are various valleys and plains, such as the Yarlung Tsangpo Valley, which is known for its fertile land and historical significance as the cradle of Tibetan civilization. These valleys often have a milder climate and support agriculture and livestock grazing. The climate in Tibet is largely influenced by its high altitude. It experiences a cold, arid climate with significant temperature variations between day and night. The region receives limited precipitation, primarily in the summer months, and is known for its strong winds and sunny days. Despite its harsh environment, Tibet hosts a unique range of flora and fauna. The diverse ecosystems include alpine meadows, grasslands, and wetlands, supporting species such as the Tibetan antelope, snow leopard, and various migratory birds. In summary, Tibet's topography is characterized by its high-altitude plateau, majestic mountain ranges, vital rivers, and unique ecosystems. 
This diverse landscape not only shapes the natural beauty of the region, but also profoundly influences the culture and lifestyle of the Tibetan people. The climate of Tibet is quite unique due to its high altitude and geographical features. Tibet is often referred to as the roof of the world because it has an average elevation of about 4,500 meters, 14,800 feet, above sea level. This high altitude significantly influences its climate. As mentioned earlier, temperatures can vary widely. Winters are extremely cold, while summers can be mild. The temperature difference between day and night can also be quite drastic, especially in the desert areas. Tibet is generally dry, with most regions receiving less than 500 mm, 20 inches, of precipitation annually. Most of the rainfall occurs during the summer months, particularly from June to September, which is considered the monsoon season. However, the rain is usually light and sporadic. In winter from December to February, the temperature is very cold, with temperatures often dropping below freezing, especially at night. In spring from March to May, gradual warming, but still cool, especially in the evenings. Summer is the warmest season, particularly in the lower regions. This is when the majority of the rainfall occurs. Tibet enjoys a lot of sunshine throughout the year, with clear skies being common. This is due to its high altitude and the dry air. Tibet has a high altitude climate that is characterized by cold winters, mild summers, and a dry atmosphere, with most of the rainfall occurring in the summer months. Tibet as Water Tower of Asia. Tibet is often referred to as the Water Tower of Asia because it is the source of many of the major rivers that flow into several of Asia's largest river systems. Tibet is home to the headwaters of several important rivers, including the Yangtze, Yellow River, Mekong, Indus, and Brahmaputra. These rivers are crucial for millions of people and ecosystems across Asia. The region has vast glaciers and snowfields that store significant amounts of fresh water. During warmer months, the melting snow and ice feed into the rivers, providing a steady flow of water. Tibet plays a critical role in the hydrological cycle of the region. The high altitude and unique climate contribute to the formation of rain and snow, which eventually replenishes the rivers. The rivers originating from Tibet support diverse ecosystems and are vital for agriculture, drinking water, and hydroelectric power for countries downstream. The rivers are not only vital for the environment, but also have cultural significance and economic importance for the countries they flow through, including China, India, Nepal, and others. Tibet is called the Water Tower of Asia because it is a crucial source of fresh water for many major rivers that sustain millions of people and ecosystems across the continent. Tibet is home to numerous lakes, many of which are high altitude and hold significant ecological, cultural, and religious importance. Here are some of the most notable lakes in Tibet. One Dot Lake Namtso. One of the largest saltwater lakes in Tibet, Namtso is situated at an altitude of about 4,718 meters, 15,479 feet. It is known for its stunning turquoise waters and surrounding snow-capped mountains. Namtso is considered sacred in Tibetan Buddhism and attracts many pilgrims. Two, Lake Yamdrok. Yamdrok Yumtso. This is another major lake in Tibet, located at an altitude of approximately 4,441 meters, 14,570 feet. Yamdrok is famous for its bright blue color and is surrounded by beautiful mountains. It is also considered a holy lake and is associated with various Tibetan legends. 3. Lake Manasarovar. Located near Mount Kailash, Lake Manasarovar is one of the highest freshwater lakes in the world, at about 4,588 meters, 15,755 feet. It holds immense religious significance for Hindus, Buddhists, and Jains, who believe it to be a sacred site for pilgrimage. The lake is known for its clear waters and is often visited by pilgrims seeking spiritual purification. 4. Lake Lamo Latso. This lake is situated at a high altitude and is famous for its mystical qualities. It is believed to be a place where people can see visions and receive prophecies. The lake is surrounded by legends and is an important site for Tibetan spirituality. 5. Lake Jari Namko. A lesser known lake, Jari Namko is located in the Shannon region of Tibet. It is known for its scenic beauty and is often visited by travelers seeking less crowded spots. 
These lakes not only contribute to the stunning landscape of Tibet, but also play a crucial role in the local ecology and culture, making them significant both environmentally and spiritually. History of Tibetan Indigenous People The indigenous people of Tibet, primarily the Tibetan ethnic group, have a rich and complex history that dates back thousands of years. The earliest inhabitants of Tibet are believed to have settled in the region around 2000 BCE. Archaeological findings suggest that they practiced agriculture and animal husbandry. The Tibetan Plateau's harsh climate and geography shaped their lifestyle, leading them to develop unique cultural practices. In the 7th century CE, the Tibetan Empire emerged under the leadership of King Songtsen Gampo. He is credited with unifying various tribes and regions, establishing Tibet as a significant political entity. Songtsen Gampo is also known for introducing Buddhism to Tibet, marrying two Buddhist princesses from Nepal and China, which helped integrate Buddhist culture into Tibetan society. Buddhism flourished in Tibet during the 8th century, especially under the reign of King Trisong Detsen. The establishment of monasteries and the translation of Buddhist texts into Tibetan played a crucial role in shaping Tibetan identity. The religion became deeply intertwined with Tibetan culture, influencing art, literature, and social structures. In the 13th century, Tibet came under the influence of the Mongol Empire. Later, during the 17th century, the Dalai Lama established a theocratic government, further solidifying Buddhism's role in governance. Throughout the centuries, Tibet maintained a degree of autonomy, although it faced various external pressures, including from the Chinese Empire. In 1950, the People's Liberation Army of China entered Tibet, leading to significant political changes. The 17-point agreement was signed in 1951, which asserted Chinese sovereignty over Tibet while promising autonomy. The 1959 Tibetan uprising against Chinese rule resulted in the Dalai Lama fleeing to India, where he established a government in exile. This event marked a significant turning point in Tibetan history and the diaspora of Tibetan culture. Today, the Tibetan people continue to advocate for cultural preservation and autonomy. The Tibetan diaspora remains active in promoting awareness of their history, culture, and the challenges they face under Chinese governance. The history of the indigenous people of Tibet is characterized by resilience and adaptation, with a strong emphasis on their unique cultural and spiritual heritage. Role of Dalai Lama in Tibet The Dalai Lama is a central figure in Tibetan Buddhism and has played a significant role in the history and culture of Tibet. The Dalai Lama is considered the spiritual leader of Tibetan Buddhism and is believed to be the reincarnation of Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. The title Dalai Lama means Ocean of Wisdom in Mongolian. The first Dalai Lama, Jendondrup, was recognized in the 15th century, but it was the fifth Dalai Lama, Lobsang Gyatso, in the 17th century, who established the political and spiritual authority of the Dalai Lama in Tibet. Under the leadership of the Dalai Lamas, Tibet became a theocratic state, where religious leaders held significant political power. The Dalai Lama served as both the spiritual and political leader of Tibet. The fifth Dalai Lama, in particular, played a crucial role in unifying Tibet and establishing a centralized government, which continued under his successors. The Dalai Lamas have been instrumental in promoting Tibetan Buddhism, culture, and education. They have established numerous monasteries and educational institutions throughout Tibet. The teachings and writings of the Dalai Lamas have greatly influenced Tibetan philosophy, art, and literature, making them central figures in Tibetan culture. After the 1959 Tibetan uprising against Chinese rule, the 14th Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso, fled to India, where he established a government in exile. He has since become a global advocate for peace, compassion, and human rights. The Dalai Lama continues to speak out about the plight of the Tibetan people and the importance of preserving Tibetan culture and identity. The Dalai Lama remains a significant spiritual figure for Tibetans and many around the world. He emphasizes nonviolence, dialogue, and the importance of compassion in addressing global issues. Although he no longer holds political power in Tibet, his influence remains strong among Tibetan communities, both in Tibet and in the diaspora. The Dalai Lama's legacy is deeply intertwined with the history of Tibet, representing a symbol of Tibetan identity and resilience in the face of challenges.
Tibetan Culture and Religious Practices Tibetan culture is rich and diverse, deeply influenced by its geographical location, history, and the predominant religion of Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism, also known as Vajrayana or Tantric Buddhism, incorporates elements of Mahayana Buddhism along with indigenous Tibetan beliefs. It emphasizes rituals, meditation, and the guidance of spiritual teachers, lamas. Monasteries are central to Tibetan culture, serving as places of worship, education, and community gathering. Major monasteries like Sera, Drepung, and Ganden are important spiritual centers. Tibetan religious practices include chanting, prayer, and meditation. Mantras, which are sacred sounds or phrases, are often recited for spiritual benefits. The most famous mantra is Om Mani Padme Hum, associated with compassion. Festivals such as Losar, Tibetan New Year, and Saga Dawa, commemorating the birth, enlightenment, and death of Buddha, are celebrated with various rituals, dances, and offerings. Tibetan art is characterized by intricate thangka paintings, sculptures, and mandalas that depict deities, spiritual teachings, and Buddhist symbols. These artworks are often used in religious practices and as teaching tools. Symbolism plays a significant role in Tibetan culture, with motifs like the lotus flower, purity, the wheel of dharma, Buddhist teachings, and the vajra, indestructibility, frequently appearing in art and architecture. Before the arrival of Buddhism, the indigenous Bon religion was practiced in Tibet. Elements of Bon, including shamanistic practices and nature worship, have been integrated into Tibetan Buddhism, enriching its cultural tapestry. The Tibetan language, with its unique script, is an important aspect of Tibetan identity. Tibetan literature includes religious texts, poetry, and historical accounts, reflecting the spiritual and cultural heritage of the Tibetan people. Traditional Tibetan medicine, based on natural remedies and holistic approaches, is still practiced today. It emphasizes balance and harmony within the body. Tibetan nomadic and agricultural lifestyles are also significant, with a strong emphasis on community, family, and respect for nature. Tibetan culture is a vibrant blend of religious devotion, artistic expression, and a deep connection to the land, making it unique and resilient despite the challenges faced by the Tibetan people. Art and Craftsmanship The art and craftsmanship of the Tibetan people are deeply intertwined with their spiritual beliefs, cultural practices, and historical experiences. Thangkas are traditional Tibetan scroll paintings that depict Buddhist deities, mandalas, and significant teachings. These paintings are often vibrant and detailed, created using mineral-based pigments and gold. Thangkas serve both as religious icons and educational tools, helping practitioners visualize and meditate on spiritual concepts. Tibetan sculptures are typically made from materials like bronze, clay, and wood. They often represent deities, bodhisattvas, and important figures in Buddhism. The craftsmanship involved in these sculptures is meticulous, with attention to detail in facial expressions, clothing, and symbolic elements. Mandalas are intricate geometric designs that represent the universe in a symbolic form. They are used in meditation practices and rituals. Creating a mandala can be a spiritual exercise, often made from colored sand, and is sometimes dismantled after completion to symbolize the impermanence of life. Tibetan carpets are known for their vibrant colors and intricate patterns. Traditionally hand-woven by nomadic communities, these carpets often feature symbolic motifs, such as flowers, animals, and geometric designs. The craftsmanship involved in carpet weaving is passed down through generations, making it a vital aspect of Tibetan culture. Tibetan metalwork includes the crafting of ritual objects, jewelry, and utensils. Artisans use techniques such as casting and engraving to create items like prayer bowls, bells, and stupas. These objects often have religious significance and are used in ceremonies and daily practices. Wood carving is another important aspect of Tibetan craftsmanship. Artisans create intricate designs on doors, furniture, and religious artifacts, often depicting scenes from Buddhist teachings, floral patterns, and animals. The skill involved in wood carving reflects a deep understanding of the material and artistic tradition. In addition to carpets, Tibetan textiles include traditional clothing and ceremonial garments.
These textiles often feature bright colors and patterns that represent the wearer's social status and regional identity. The craftsmanship of textile creation includes spinning, dyeing, and weaving. Tibetan ceramics are often used for both practical and ritual purposes. Pottery may be decorated with traditional motifs and used in everyday life or during religious ceremonies. The art and craftsmanship of the Tibetan people not only showcase their aesthetic sensibilities, but also serve as a means of expressing their spirituality and cultural identity. Each piece of art carries a story, reflecting the rich heritage and traditions of the Tibetan community. From the stunning mountains to the peaceful monasteries, Tibet's beauty and spirituality have truly amazed us. It's a land that captivates the heart and soul, leaving a lasting impression on all who have the privilege to visit. Tibet, with its awe-inspiring landscapes and profound traditions, is a treasure trove of wonder and serenity. Here's to the timeless beauty of Tibet.